The fact that we have such a rich collection of works by the pre-Raphaelites here in the Ashmolean is a result of the many connections between the artists of the movement and the city of Oxford. A number of artists connected to the pre-Raphaelites, Burne Jones, Morris, Alfred William Hunt, John Ruskin, studied at the university. In the 1850s, another group, including Burne Jones and Morris and Arthur Hughes, came and decorated the Oxford Union with murals. And the art critic John Ruskin, the great champion of the movement, had long associations with the city and indeed left his own collection of drawings, including his teaching collection, to the university. But the most important connection that the pre-Raphaelite artists had with the city of Oxford was through the support they received from the wealthy superintendent of the university press, Thomas Kuhn, and his wife, Martha. They were a generation older than the artists of the Brotherhood, but they almost adopted them. And the young, serious-minded artists would come and stay in their Oxford home while they supported them through buying and commissioning works. And it is these works that form the core of the Ashmolean's collections when they were left to the university by Martha on her death in the 1890s. And this collection in turn has acted as a magnet attracting subsequent gifts and bequests and leading to the great range of pre-Raphaelite works in the collection that we are celebrating in this exhibition. This is a wonderfully characterful portrait, bursting with life and dynamism, conveyed in the upward flicks of hair, of moustache and quiff and eyebrows, the tilt of the head, the swivel of the eyes, the suggestion of a smile, everything speaks to the vivacity and generosity of spirit of the splendidly bearded Thomas Kuhn, unsurprisingly known to the circle of artists he befriended and supported as the Patriarch. If this suggests a man of deep seriousness, Hunt's portrait suggests the opposite and reveals the warmth and wit of the man who was particularly close to the young Hunt. The same cannot be said, it has to be admitted, of the companion portrait of Martha. Although ten years her husband's junior, and by all accounts generous and warm-spirited herself, she appears here rather startlingly severe, and in marked contrast to both her husband and to the customarily idealised pre-Raphaelite women we're so familiar with. It may be that Thomas and Martha felt rather the same way about the portrait. For although the drawing of Thomas was given by Hunt to the Coombs, the portrait of Martha stayed with the artist until, as the inscription describes, he gave it to the university two years after Martha's death.